exciting rides, water slides, delicious food, live entertainment, and challenging games make amusement parks and attractions popular destinations for family vacations and leisure time activities. Each year, millions of people come to places such as these from across the country and around the world. They come expecting to relax and have a good time, a safe time. That's where you come in. An important part of your job is to help assure the personal safety of each of our guests, as well as yourselves and your fellow employees. Remember this important fact. Happy people doing pleasant things are not thinking about their personal safety. As funny as this incident may appear, this situation could have led to a serious injury. Remember, an accident is an incident that shouldn't have happened. That's why we believe that accident prevention must be the number one goal on our minds at all times. During the course of this safety overview orientation, be aware that even though the rides and water attractions have been filmed at different facilities, the safety principles that apply are interchangeable for all rides, water slides, and all amusement facilities. Every employee is not only responsible for enforcing the safety regulations and procedures that apply to their ride, slide, or job station, but also for those that apply to the facility as a whole. Over the years, we've seen guests do some pretty strange and unsafe acts. Some safety concerns resulting from guest actions may best be illustrated by watching a guest named Elwood enjoying his day. Running, jumping on or off a moving ride, sitting on rails or fencing, failure to keep hands or arms inside the ride, overcrowding of seats or other areas, removing safety belts or straps, food or drink at rides, forcing a frightened guest to ride, intoxication or drug use, and improper dress, such as no shirt or shoes. The goal, of course, is to have no Elwoods. It's your responsibility to always be alert for and attempt to prevent or correct these actions. A courteous verbal reminder may be all that's needed. In addition to general safety, you as employees are responsible for the safety regulations, procedures, and inspections that apply to your equipment or job station. All safety features must be thoroughly checked and the inspection documented on the appropriate form. All required safety equipment and signs must be in place. All equipment must be test run in all modes of operation before anyone, even an employee, is permitted to ride. To assure the safety of our guests, the smallest malfunction must be investigated and corrected by qualified personnel before operation may continue. It's extremely important to watch small children carefully because these little people do not see the need for caution. Before starting your ride, all attendants must check all safety belts, lap chains, and safety bars. Never rely upon any adult or guardian attending children. You make the check. After you've checked all the seats and before starting your ride, look one more time to make sure no one has moved out of their seat. Operators on children's rides must be very alert at all times. When working on larger rides or water slides with other operators or attendants, you should use the appropriate hand signals to indicate when the final safety check has been made. Many rides and attractions have a height limit for the protection and safety of our guests. So many children think tall, but this doesn't make them big enough to participate. Let's see how an alert operator handles a guest who is too short to ride. Hi there, how are you? Uh, just a minute, let me check his size. Uh, he's not quite tall enough for this ride. There are some smaller rides over in Kitty Land that would be perfect. Uh, that's okay, he can ride. I'll take full responsibility. I'm sorry, ma'am, we can't change the rules. You need to be at least 54 
anxious to ride this ride. When interacting with a guest, you should instruct in a calm, sympathetic, but firm tone, using concern and courtesy. Remember, our guests are here to have fun, and they're not thinking about their personal safety. Where a required height is mandatory, tears, bribery, and threats must be ignored. If you have trouble convincing a guest, call your supervisor immediately. One group of guests that require special care and consideration are the handicapped. Where possible, take great pride in accommodating these very special guests to help ensure their comfort and safety. Access to rides and attractions for wheelchair guests will be discussed in your on-site training. But you should remember these important points when dealing with handicapped guests. One, except for obvious courtesy, you should not assist in moving handicapped guests because each medical situation varies. You haven't been trained as to the proper lifting and carrying for every handicap. Two, some guests may not have the strength to participate alone and should be attended by at least one responsible person who is familiar with their limitations. Even so, if the ride is not suited for them, they should not be allowed to participate. And three, follow specific procedures as outlined by your instruction manual or supervisor. Signs may inform guests as to the kind of ride they can expect to experience. It's part of your job to help guests make an educated decision as to whether they should or should not participate at a certain attraction. Remember, it's your responsibility to enforce all safety policies and help guests understand them. As employees, you have some other responsibilities as well. First, dress neatly. Guests will relate your personal appearance with safety and your authority. Always look your best. Which employee do you think our guests will respect and obey more readily? Know the layout and location of all attractions and facilities. Could you tell me where the closest restrooms are? Sure. Just walk down to the end of these buildings and turn to your right. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Be sure to read and study all manuals and handbooks and review procedures and policies frequently. Never operate equipment unless you've received complete training and authorization. Take all training seriously. Ask questions about anything you don't understand. And always operate your ride or equipment exactly as you were trained. It's very important that you allow no one else to operate your equipment who has not been thoroughly trained and authorized. Remember, we're depending on you for the safety of our guests and fellow employees. Be alert and attentive at all times. Never divert your attention from your job or be distracted by friends who may try to get your attention during work hours. Hey, Jim, what are you and Sue doing tonight? I can't talk to you right now. You'll have to catch me on my break. Stay seated, please. Stay alert. Be aware of the proper action to take in case of an incident. Know the procedure for stopping and quick evacuation of your attraction. Operating your equipment demands your complete attention. Remember, a well-trained employee can often spot potential safety problems before they occur. There's more to your job than just safety. Relating to guests who are unhappy or injured must be done in a manner that will reduce tension. Let's take a look at a wrong way and a right way to handle a delicate situation. That was pretty stupid, lady. This wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have tried to get off the ride while it was still moving. Well, nobody told me. There weren't any signs. Signs? You don't need signs. You need common sense. Common sense? Huh? Are you all right, ma'am? Can you walk? Oh, that's all right. I think I just sprained my ankle. Here, let me help you over to that bench. I'll call someone from first aid to come over and help. Thank you. Remember, when relating to guests in any situation, what you say and how you say it can matter a lot, reducing tension and keeping guests happy. In addition to our guests, 
You have the responsibility to safeguard yourselves against possible dangers and health hazards. Some general guidelines to follow are, follow all instructions given during your orientation and on-site training. Make safety suggestions to your supervisor. To reduce the chance of heat stroke or exhaustion, make sure you eat properly. Drink plenty of water. Never operate equipment without receiving the proper training and authorization from your supervisor. Unless directly involved, stay away from construction sites. When you are working around construction projects or when the situation warrants, be sure to use proper safety equipment, such as safety glasses, gloves, a hard hat, or ear protection. When working with chemicals or cleaning solvents, be sure to wear required protective attire, such as goggles and rubber gloves. Carefully read all labels and safety data sheets for chemicals and solvents that you may use while preparing your areas. Report all injuries, no matter how minor. Remember, our combined efforts will ensure a safe, clean, and pleasant environment for yourself, your co-workers, and our guests. For whatever attraction at which you're stationed, there will be daily housekeeping duties. These could be as small as wiping off seats, or as large as cleaning a picnic shelter. But each one is just as important to the safety and comfort of our guests. Report major cleanliness problems and hazards, such as spills on walkways and overflowing restroom facilities, to the appropriate personnel. Practice good housekeeping throughout your shift by picking up cups, papers, and other trash from around your attraction or wherever you see it. Remember, clean is safe. Another important area to discuss is maintenance. While maintenance personnel are the only ones who will be making actual repairs, there's a lot you can do to make sure our rides and equipment keep running safely. First, carefully complete all safety checklists. Read each item when you make the check and then mark it off as you do the inspection. Be especially alert for loose, broken, or missing nuts and bolts, tripping hazards, sharp edges, worn safety straps or seat belts. In addition to the routine inspection, all equipment operators should constantly watch for needed repairs during the day. Immediately report any unusual noises. Sharp edges on water slides or other problems to your supervisor. Every employee, whether operating equipment or not, should look for common safety hazards such as bare electrical wires or improperly grounded plugs, spilled lubricants, and protruding objects. Never attempt to make repairs yourself. Maintenance personnel are the only ones trained and authorized to make repairs on mechanical or electrical equipment. If you're not trained to make the repair, do not attempt to make it. Emergency procedures for first aid, fires, power failures, and natural disasters must be learned thoroughly. Your quick response could help avoid a serious injury, especially in a major incident. Know the locations of all telephones nearest your workstation. Memorize the important telephone numbers. During an emergency, keep telephone conversations to a minimum so that other calls can be received. Become familiar with the locations and operation of all fire prevention equipment. There are different types of extinguishers for different kinds of fires. Water, CO2, dry chemical, the most common, and halon, which is used for computer or electronic fires. Most extinguishers work by pulling the pin, pressing the lever, and directing the discharge at the base of the flame Make sure that used or discharged extinguishers are returned to the appropriate department for replacement or refilling. If you work inside, make sure that fire exits are not blocked and that all exit signs are working. You should learn the exact policies and procedures regarding the safe handling of fires. With regard to first aid, 
know the company's first aid policy. It's a good idea to learn and understand basic methods of life saving, such as CPR, the ABCs, uh, that is airway, breathing and circulation, and the Heimlich maneuver. General accident procedures should include stop operation of the ride, slide or attraction, assist the injured. In the event of a serious injury, such as major trauma, broken bones or head, neck or back injuries, do not move the injured person as this may increase the extent of the injury. Call security or first aid. Report the incident to management. Get names and addresses of all witnesses and try to retain them if possible for investigative personnel. Above all, do not discuss the incident or make statements to anyone except authorized personnel from our company. Another incident that requires immediate attention is a power failure. It's a good idea to have authorized personnel turn off circuit breakers to prevent accidental startup or damage to equipment when power resumes. You'll learn more about this in your on-site training. Assist guests in exiting rides and darkened buildings. When the power comes back on, you'll be given permission to test run the equipment, after which you may resume normal operation. Remember, after a major power failure, you must make another test run of your equipment in all modes of operation. During this presentation, you've been given an overview of amusement facility safety. After working a few weeks, you'll develop a sixth sense regarding guests and their movements. And as you perform your duties, you'll learn to be more aware of what's happening near and around your workstation. You will be thinking safety. Leisure and recreation employees are special people. They are alert. They use good judgment. Their appearance is pleasing and they are courteous to our guests. Because our guests get special treatment, they keep returning to amusement facilities and attractions around the world. Because of you, our guests know they are welcome. They know they will have a good time. And even though they don't think about it, they know they will be safe.